नमस्कार प्रणाम हेलो एवरीवन आई एम प्रोफेसर उगवेद और एज ऑल ऑफ यू नो मी प्रोफेसर आरवेडी एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर इन माय प्लेलिस्ट प्लेसमेंट इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चंस ऑन सी प्रोग्रामिंग इट्स बीइंग अ लॉन्ग दैट आई हैव अपलोडेड अ वीडियो बट नाउ आई विल बी ट्राइंग माई बेस्ट टू अपलोड इट क्वाइट फ्रिक्वेंटली but still so far i have managed to cover lot of fundamental concepts of c programming maybe up to the level that uh, i feel like it is no more uh, a playlist of placement interview questions on c programming but it is a kind of a very good course on c programming uh, which can be considered i hope all of you have uh, taken the advantage of this particular set of videos and i would kindly request you to spread it across to all your acquaintances whom you feel uh are in a need of a good course on c programming okay so uh do subscribe my channel if you have not yet subscribed and do spread it across to all your friends so let's move on to uh the current video the question even though maybe i am taking the topics in questions uh i am covering a lot of fundamentals so the question is just a way of uh, categorizing the topics into sub topics fine so in today's video we'll have a uh, question like what are unity operators in c part 1 you know because i have even uh, divided this unity operators into two so that i'll be able to justify uh, properly and i'll be able to explain in detail see so far we have uh, done lot of operators operators being a very uh, big topic i have divided that into multiple videos we had seen arithmetic operators relational operators logical operators bitwise operators not only that we had also seen a video on operator precedence and associativity so uh, unity operators also are nothing but one of the very important types of operators and we are going to see each one of them in detail so i preferred keeping it in two parts so the next video also you'll be able to see the remaining unity operators right so let's go ahead uh, this being the first one we will first understand what are the unity operators and then we will see each one in detail so starting with what are unary operators as the name suggest unary it is something that's going to work with a single operand so we can define unary operators as the operators which are going to work with a single operand only fine so whenever uh, it comes to precedence unary operators will have a more precedence over binary as well as ternary in my video on operator precedence i have already given you the slab so at the top we have special operators then we have unary set of operators and then the remaining operators are there unary obviously uh, even though lesser than the special operators but it has got a higher precedence over the binary and the ternary operator that we have fine so let's start with uh, the individual unary operator so the first one is unary negation a very simple one it is going to uh, what you can say uh, reverts the the sign of the given operand so if i have a operand being negative number it becomes positive if it is positive it becomes negative so that's the basic job of unary negation okay it is used to negate the value of the given operand right so uh, a simple explanation that if the original value is positive then it becomes negative and vice versa so let's have a look at the example so if i have a original operand let's say a which is 5 b equal to minus a is going to negate the value of a and is going to assign it to b so what will be the value of b after that obviously it will be minus 5 but if i ask you what will be the value of a after this expression then it will not be minus 5 it will be still 5 because a was used on a right side so it is used as a r value we had just used the value of a which is 5 negated it which had given us a r value of minus 5 and that was getting stored in b so my a is not getting changed a very good learning rather you can have from that maybe i'll i'll just take up uh, one more example which will make it more clear so suppose i have uh, a let's say as 5 only and if i simply say minus a can you tell me what will be the value of a after that acha first of all <clears throat> you might be having a, a doubt that whether minus a writing minus a is it allowed in c yeah c obviously allows it for c a single variable itself is a statement so c says you know what you are doing and we should take care of it so yes minus a is allowed but you know if i do only minus a the value of a still remains 5 because as i just now explained minus a is going to be r value which will be minus 5 but 
but am i storing it anything no i'm not storing that in anything so a is not going to change automatically unless i do it this way a equal to minus a. so when i do a equal to minus a this negated r value which is minus 5 is getting stored in a and that will change a to minus 5 Achha, what if my a is already minus 5 and if i say a equal to minus a you know that minus of minus is going to be positive so it becomes plus 5 fine so i guess uh, this is enough for you to understand unary negation let's move on to next unary not which we already seen in uh, logical operators so it's one of the logical operator which is used to reverse the truth value of the given operand. So if the operand uh, which has to be a boolean value, so you can see it requires an operand which is to be a boolean value. So uh, if the operand is, uh, let's say the value of the truth value of the operand is true, it makes it false. And if it is false, it makes it true. So let's look at the example. So a is two less than three. So what's the value of a? Obviously two less than three is true. So value of a is true when i say b equal to not a obviously not of a which is not of true is going to be false so the ideally value uh, that would be there with b should be false now how do i represent true and false which also we had already seen so true is represented as one and false is represented as zero and that's how the notions are being used okay let me give you another example so suppose a is five and if i say b equal to not not a then what will be the value of b okay now first of all we might be wondering is it allowed because just now we said that operand must be a boolean value yeah now a equal to 5 when i say a is storing an integer and not a boolean value but c is also good at taking the truth value of the given operand so the value of a is 5 the rule is if the value integer value stored is a non-zero value then it will be considered as true and if it's a zero it is considered as false so currently a stores five which is non-zero so the value of a or the truth value of a i can say is true so not of a is going to be false this is going to be false but if we again have not of that which is going to make it true and what is true how do we represent that is one now here the common mistake people do which we shouldn't that a is 5, not of a makes it 0 and not of that makes it 5. No, it's not going to make it back to 5. Remember one thing, the answers given by any logical operators will always be either 0 or 1. It will be either false or true. So a being 5 is true, not of a is false and not of that is going to make it true which will be 1. So final value of b here will be 1. Okay, that is about unary not. So it's a bit, uh, sorry, logical operator which we already had seen but instead of just saying that we had already seen in the previous video i preferred that i would obviously reiterate that separately for all of you in this video as well same rather will be uh, the case for the next one unary complement even unary complement if you remember we had seen in bitwise operators because it's one of the bitwise operator that we have okay only thing is that it was unary so it has come here okay let's let's try to reiterate the same thing again See, it's a bitwise operator which works with what? Which works with bit patterns. So the operand must be an integer value. That's what we want. So we'll take an integer value operand, we'll convert that to bit pattern, and we're just going to reverse the bit pattern. Zeros are going to become one, one's going to become zero, and so on. So let's take an example. So let's say if I have a as 25, and if I do this, b equal to not a. So let's say maybe a is 25, 25 is 16 plus nine, Okay, I'll make it 8 bit, which ideally should be made 16 bit, but 8 bit is still fine for understanding. Okay, so this is my uh, currently 25. Now, when I make a complement of that, what I get is 1110110. So now I want to know what is this. So I have to take two complements for that. And how do I take two complement? I'm going to take one complement again, and I'm add, adding I'm adding one to it. So now if I take one complement of that again is going to go back to what uh, 25 again and if i make add one to it it's going to be zero 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 one one uh zero one zero which is 26 but remember after complementing the sign bit was one so final answer is not going to be 26 but it's going to be 
minus 26 and that will be the answer which you will get yes the value of b will be minus 26 so that's how your complement is going to work maybe a simple summary a gist of that is it takes up the bit pattern uh, sorry it takes up the operand in integer converts that to bit pattern and it will simply reverse the bit pattern okay so that's the unary complement concept uh, the next and maybe the last in the current video we're going to see is unary increment it's one of the very important one as the increment name suggests it will be used to perform a shortcut increment you know it is a shortcut way to increment a given uh, operand by one so you can see unary increment is a shortcut operator used for incrementing a variable by one see it has got two versions pre and post so for example you know i can write plus plus a which obviously can be considered as a pre increment or it could be a plus plus which will be considered as a post increment you know both of them will have a hidden meaning a equal to a plus one are you getting it so even though here now like you know negation you might be wondering okay, sir, yeah, yeah, baby, though, there is no uh, uh, l value present L value nahi hai. So how is it getting stored? Even though L value is not there here, it has got a hidden meaning. So this means what? You operand ko uthao, take up this operand, you add one to it, and you store the uh, the added value, the incremented value, back into the same operand. That's what it means. And that's the reason. Even if you don't see an L value here, there is an L value. Okay, so it does the job perfectly fine. So you'll see the same thing in the next point. It can be used in prefix and postfix manner. Plus plus a and a plus plus is equivalent to a equal to a plus one. Okay, we're going to take up some examples. Maybe to start with, I'll take a simple one. So suppose I have got a as five. Okay, if I say uh, plus plus a, and if I say a plus plus, currently what do you think would be the difference? This is pre. And this is post you know frankly speaking here there is no difference because pre says you know what pre says let me first tell you that pre says pehle increment karo. you first increment and then you do whatever you want to with that incremented value post says no no you first have to use the value as it is and then at the end i'm going to increment that is post so the name only tells you pre and post but now when we only have a single work to do that is only increment hi karna apne ko then what pre and what post it is simply going to increment directly so i'm not going to write this because i actually want to use this for further example but in both these cases or let me write it both these cases the value of a is going to be six irrespective of whether it is pre or post so can we conclude that if pre and post is being considered isolately or independently then pre and post behaves in the same manner now my next twist to this is if I do b equal to plus plus a and b equal to a plus plus, now what will be the changes? Let me tell you in this case also, the value of a finally you will get in both the cases will be 6. Increment to ho na hi hai. Now when that increment will happen, it depends on pre and post. Are you getting it? So what it means? They be pre kya bol rahe? What pre is saying? Pre is saying you first increment. So as soon as I start with plus plus a, the first thing I do is I'll increment a to six and then I'll use it for what assignment. So obviously B will get the incremented value. Whereas my post increment says you first use it for the operation. So without incrementing a to six, I'm going to assign it to B. So my B is going to get the old value, which is five. And then I'll increment my value of a to six. So that's the basic difference between pre and post. You know, sometimes the things become even worse. Actually, we shouldn't get into that, but I'll still take one example. What if I have multiple increment and all these things? Okay, so maybe you'll get a idea about that as well. Okay, so give me uh, a minute. Okay, along with that, we will also see that along with uh, increment, we also have decrement. Okay, but let us have a look at what if we have something like this. So if I say B equal to plus plus A plus a plus 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 a something quite weird right okay i want to know what is the value of a after that and what is the value of b after that i'll give you a simple trick a simple set of steps first 
apply all pre see pre comes before the operation then use value everywhere okay and then the third one is apply all post so can you see clearly the pre is getting applied before the operation post is getting applied after the operation so if i apply the same thing here let's see how it goes change the color a bit okay so yeah Maybe this one would be better yeah so initially value of a is what 10 so bolo pre kitne ek ye pre nahi hai post hai ye kitna hai second one so there are two pre pre increments we is going to make the value of 10 as what 12 okay so apply all pre is done use the value everywhere so i'll be using the value of that everywhere so this is 12 this is also 12 and this is also 12 okay then use the value everywhere so before solving the expression let me go to the next one apply all post how many post increments we have only one so it's going to make it 13 fine so that's the end of the uh, steps also so value of a is 13 for sure because i'm not storing that in a if i would have done that you know, things would have been different okay but a value of a is 13 and now you try to add this up 12 plus 12 plus 12 Which will make it 36. You can very well cross-check that with your a simple small program. Maybe I'll also take up that uh, in uh, near future. We'll start with small small programs. So I'll be also uh, be able to show you such things uh, programmatically as well. But this is a simple way you can try to resolve this difficult or complicated type of expressions. Okay, like unary increment, we will obviously be having unary decrement. An example is already being taken. So similarly, we'll have unary decrement. I don't think I need to spend time for unary decrement because let that be minus minus a or a minus minus. Both would be equivalent to a equal to a minus one. So the way we do increment by one. Similarly, if you see minus minus, you're going to do decrement by one. Okay, so you can try making uh, uh, expressions like this, complicated ones, and maybe have uh, uh, turns for solving them. So that you can cross check with your friends. Fine. My job was to give you the basics of increment operator, and I guess with this I have done it quite efficiently. So uh, that was unary increment and unary decrement. So this was the first installment for uh, unary operators. Uh, we have understood what are unary operators. We had seen some of the unary operators, which are obviously very important. Okay, as I already said, we'll be coming up with the next video where we'll be looking at. unary operators part 2 and the remaining unary operators i'll be covering in that next video okay in detail again so till that time uh, take care of yourself stay safe stay healthy and uh, be there with me on my youtube channel and help me support me in spreading it across fine so that's it from my side in this video thank you and as usual happy learning